Let's talk about presumed innocent. Not innocence. Let's talk about presumed innocent. I'm sure some of you guys have already watched it. A limited TV, a limited release on Apple TV. Absolutely incredible TV series. Allegedly is based on a Harrison Ford movie, which is also based on a book and shit. Bloody blah, blah, blah. I've never watched Harrison Ford movie or watched or read the book. I'm only basing it based on this amazing amazing limited edition or limited series on apple starring jake gyllenhaal and it's fucking great now if you haven't watched presumed innocent if you haven't watched presumed innocent please for the love of god skip this part mute me whatever it may be because i'm going to spoil the fuck out of this i need to talk about something that's very integral to this whole entire series so i'm going to spoil it in five four three two one the really interesting thing I took away from this is something that I've been kind of ruminating on a bit when I've been, you know, since I've watched it. There's this really interesting premise in the show where essentially Jake Gyllenhaal's character is accused of murdering his colleague who he was having an affair with. And throughout the entire series, it's basically a whodunit type of thing. And the really interesting thing about the series is that you get like these little flashbacks of how their relationship was, right? This little affair he was having. And how it impacted him, his family, his wife, blah, 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 colleagues, whatever it may be. And how it put him in a competent position because he was a lawyer himself. And she was a lawyer. They would look for a law firm. And he had to go to the, 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 the court, whatever it may be. And he was charged with murder, blah, 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 blah. One of the interesting parts for me was this idea about desire. This idea about attraction. Right? Because it starts off with them mutually getting along and liking each other really indulging himself in the perverse nature of the affair, enjoying how deceptive and how bad and how, you know, how good it made them feel to kind of get off of each other behind each other, behind they, their partner's backs and behind their colleagues' backs and shit. But then during that time, something changed and it went from them loving each other and enjoying that moment to the guy maybe getting a little bit too into it, too attached, making it weird, freaking out the girl to the point where she's saying, hey, you need to back off now. And she's now being worried for her life, which then, of course, led to her eventually passing away. And it really fascinated me because it's a really good kind of representation and example of how it works in the real world, especially between men and women. I find that women have a much better way or are much better in general at turning that tap off or clicking off when it when it off it's off. Well, I have to think with guys, the switch is always on, you know? It's like back in the day when my parents would sometimes leave the lights on in the house when they go out to make people believe that someone was in there so they wouldn't fucking rub the house. I think that's how guys are. The switch is always on, whether it's from your first girl you kissed when you was in primary school to some fling you had at work. The light is always on, regardless of what your situation is. If they catch you at the right time, they could get their peace. But with women, it's not the same thing. When they're over it, they're over it. When, once the ick has been established, the ick cannot be taken away, right? And I love that they were able to depict that because in the guy's eyes, he's just doing what he was doing in the beginning. That was cool. But it was cool at one point. That's a particular word you need to remember, the cool aspect. And I was wondering, looking at us, thinking, can women uncool a situation? Can women freak out men the same way men freak out women in those type of interactions? I don't think so. I think guys have a weird, perverse, <laughs> almost creepy ability to freak out even people that are sexually, romantically interested in them. It can go from, oh shit, I want you so much, I can't even sleep, to don't call me again, you're blocked, go away, you're dead to me, if you call me again, I'm going to call the police type of thing. That's how quickly it can change for a woman. And it can almost, almost change, it can almost change sometimes without you realising and it can almost change in an instant. In a fucking instant. And that's what you see in this show. And it's almost Jake Gyllenhaal's character is trying to process what's happening in real time to their sexual relationship, to whatever relationship he wanted to have with her, while also trying to keep it secret, while also trying to manage his wife and his children and everyone's you know perception of him and stuff. And it essentially turns him crazy. And I think it legitimately was a good depiction of how it is in real life honestly and it also made me realize oh you know what it kind of further 
cemented this idea that I've kind of seen online about women not being able to should not not being encouraged to give guys the benefit of doubt. And I think this is true. I think, especially if you're a woman, you should go into every interaction with a guy in the back of your head thinking he could make this not cool. <laughs> you should maybe be thinking of the worst. I know it's a very pessimistic way to kind of look at relationships and stuff, but it really is with it really is in the interest of your safety. In the interest of your own safety, you always have to have it in the back of your head. This guy could turn into a weirdo at any point. This guy could turn into a creep. This guy could turn into a monster. This guy could turn into a stone cold murderer at any point. So keep your eyes open, check your shoulders, keep your head on a fucking swivel. Because as presumed innocent proved, sometimes that desire, especially when the guy is not very aware of what's going on, and as Asad Aziz says, if the guy is scaring away the hoes by just being a bit too eager and being too presumptuous and being too pushy and buddy, 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 buddy it could go from somebody just being eager to show you how interested they are to suddenly going to like, I just brought you some flowers. I found your address by revert searching something that I saw online. I saw you mentioned in the interview that you like this particular flower. So I got it for you. And I know you're on tour. I checked your fucking tour schedule. So I thought I'd wait outside of this station because most likely this is a station that you wait out. Like, you're like, whoa, 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 buddy. Whoa. Are you stalking me? You know what I mean? It, and, and, and in the guy's head, it sounds rational. It sounds like it makes sense. It sounds okay. But when you say it aloud, it comes across insane. So that's what I got away from it. I was like, you know what? I think a lot of us dudes out there can unfortunately see a lot of ourselves in the Jake Gyllenhaal character. But the the I think the the real key in a lot of like interactions, especially with the opposite sex sometimes, is to know to calibrate when to like put your foot on the pedal, when to take it off the pedal, when to, you know, ramp up things, when to pull away, when to chill, when to whatever. Yeah, I mean, you kind of have to know how to like play that. And sometimes it's not within your control. Sometimes there's things that just happen and you just have to kind of just, you know, bear the consequences of it. It is what it is. But I think there's a lot of like dignity in just bowing out gracefully too when it's not going well for you, when you're not getting the responses that you want anymore, where maybe the person is a bit scared as they were <laughs> presumed innocent, where they legitimately don't want to pick up your phone calls and sending you to voicemail, maybe back away a little bit and just accept the L. Because I think there's a lot, there's not really a lot of that nowadays, I feel like. I feel like for maybe it's hustle, maybe it's hustle culture. I don't know, but I feel like guys are encouraged not to give up. And I don't think that's a good thing. I think not giving up when you're trying to pursue somebody that you're interested in romantically or sexually is almost a form of harassment. If somebody's not giving you a sign that they're interested, just back away, bro. Just, you know, back away, you know, do your little fucking prayers and keep it moving. It is what it is. Maybe sometimes it can change. Likely it won't. Like I said, when women are off it, they're off it. But the worst thing you could do is to pursue, pursue, be determined, hustle. Um, I don't know. Uh, show incentive and shit and be like stalking them kind of like all this sort of weird shit no 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 we don't do that don't do that as a good pull the fucking away the ending i thought was pretty shit in my personal opinion in the end spoiler alert it wasn't actually the jake jinho character that murdered the woman he was having an affair with it was actually his daughter who had found out that the dad was having the affair was pissed off followed the you know basically went to the woman's house told her to stay away and in that interaction argument happened bang killed and then the next day jake gyllenhaal's character goes to go and meet this woman or to speak to her again goes to the house and finds her dead body automatically knows this is his daughter and then kind of cleans up the scene to make it look like another murder that hadn't been sold blah 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 blah, blah. i personally did like that ending because it made everyone in the family complicit into the crime. And so I didn't find that ending. I wanted the guy to go down and for his entire family to lose everything. But I thought the wife actually of Jake Gyllenhaal played that role really well. And um, I love the the really sobering and sad bit, actually. Especially for a lot of dudes. Especially for a lot of fucking horrendous, um, awful dudes, myself included, who have been scumbags in the past. One of the guys, I think the woman actually says in the series something along the lines of like, um, she felt she felt like her daughter was judging her for staying with the dad she can almost feel like her her daughter's disappointment because on one side the daughter's supporting the dad because the dad right but she's also disappointed in the mum as a woman for sticking by somebody 
that will dog her out so much. Because I think in the series, the guy's cheated a couple of times and she's forgiven him. And this is like the third time. And now this woman that was dead was pregnant before she died. All this shit, right? So the, he, I remember she said some sort of line like that. Like, and I was thinking, raw boy. That's one thing. That's one thing as cheated man them outside as me as a rehabilitated fucking piece of shit. But as a as as fucking cheaters out there, guys, especially for the dudes, that's one thing dudes don't really think and consider, especially in a moment where you're just kind of chasing your fucking emotions and your lust and horniness levels and shit. That ripple effect of how it can affect not only the person that you've betrayed, but also your kids, but also how your kids look at your partner, how your family members look at them, especially if they stay with you. The like, you know what I mean? How it might kind of lower the way that they're perceived. In, like, all this sort of shit people don't really think about in the moment where you just want to get your fucking minka wet and shit. So I recommend you check it out. Really interesting series. Um, Very thought-provoking. I thought the ending was a bit loose and a bit shit and a bit rushed. But overall, for an eight series, um, limited edition episode, uh, episode, series, whatever, very, very fucking good. Jake Gyllenhaal, of course, master of his craft. His range is absolutely stupid. So if you're a fan of TV, I recommend you check out the show, Presumed Innocent, available now on Apple, on the Blood Clot Apple.